but go ahead. Live. I'm kicking up the countdown. Go ahead. Ladies in the locker room. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome, welcome to the locker room. Yay. Hey. How'd you guys like that intro? You're not especially Love like it. that boxing part. I liked it. Lindsay. Now I know Lindsay can kick my butt. So. You know what I'm, no, we, we got to bring her in to kick somebody else's butt. She can be security and one of the hosts. No doubt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys. First of all, everyone, thanks for joining Ladies in the Locker Room. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ladies, how's your week going? What's going on in your in your world? What's going on? Anybody? Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Nothing good, huh? Well, the um, All-Star Game is um, right now, or like the Sam Dunk Contest and everything exciting is happening today. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to watch that. Mm -hmm. Um there was a big fight this weekend that I'll be talking about later. Mm -hmm. And um, Women's Day is actually tomorrow. So it's kind of like, since we're a uh, woman show, all women, mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important as well. So good things all around. Nice. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, Women's Day, and there's a lot going on with women around the sports, around the league, around mm -hmm. all the leagues, actually. And I'm really happy about that. I, I'm just seeing all kind of different news reports about women in sports playing the game, officiating the game, uh, running, you know, professional teams, just all, all sorts of things. And I think that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are going to talk about All-Star Weekend being in Atlanta, which, in um, your backyard. yeah, yeah. Too bad uh, they didn't want it in my backyard, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have to say that I did get out a little bit on Friday night and um, uh, Atlanta was quite busy on Friday night and last night uh, for an event that uh, wasn't supposed to happen, let's just say. Uh, a lot of parties happened. There was gridlock all downtown, uh, lots wow. of gridlock. So. But uh, I'm excited uh, that something did happen. So we'll see what happens. You didn't go to any of those parties? Nah, I was too busy to party this time. I, I'll tell you, trust me, I have partied enough to last me, but I'm not finished. <laughs> don't get it twisted. I'm not saying I'm finished <laughs> not partying. Finished. No, no, I'll get her back to partying. Don't worry. I got <laughs> it. Yes, we, we'll get back. Which, speaking of parties, right next then, Sunday, next Sunday is my birthday. So I'm trying to decide how I'm going to party for my birthday. Yeah. So March 14th is a holiday, y'all. It's my birthday. <laughs> uh, and, and I was thinking about having a party. I really, I, I had planned a party for like the last couple of years to make this year to have a party because I have one every couple of years. Now I'm just torn. I don't know whether I should have a party or not. People are COVID safe. They're not COVID safe. You know, I'm, it's still up in the air. Um, I don't know. And then my favorite runaway is just run away to Miami for the weekend. You know, that's my well, Let's do it though, Hattie. Let's have a birthday party. Let's do Ooh. it. I, I, yes. At, like, at the beginning of all this, like they were doing, um, we did a lot of like Zoom birthdays or drive by in your car birthdays. Yes. And I'm so, I'm sorry, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do one more of those. Like it's, me too. I want it. I, I mean, I'll do it because to be safe, but at the same time, it's like, uh, can we just like 
postpone everything. We'll just have one big birthday party when this is all over. Cause you know, I'd rather That's do that than like fair. sit on another Zoom call or, you know, well, drive I'm by in my car. Doing, I'm not doing a drive by birthday again, unless they're serving cocktails in the drive. <laughs> well, you can, but that's a good one. You can ride by and grab your cocktail, keep going. I think that's yeah. a good one. Hey, I'll get go like over. A you know, I was a party planner, an event planner, and everything. Like, I can plan you quite the little shindig. Well, you know, we may have to talk about that. <laughs> we might have to talk about that little shindig because I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I said, it's already here. I, I would have had it planned already, but because of COVID. That's, and, you know, speaking of that, that's what my story is going to be about tonight. I'm going to be talking about uh, All Star Weekend and basically that's what what it was all about. It, it was supposed to be somewhere else and it ended up here. The players didn't want to have it. People didn't want, it was just a big, big mess and it's all behind COVID. And, and I mean, I'm torn myself. At some point you feel like, okay, come on, we, we need to live. Next year is not going to be here for everybody. So we got to do some things this year. And then I know we, we got to be safe. So, but we we got to see what's going to happen because that's, uh, that's just what's going on with the world. One minute we're having parties. And, and let me tell you, young people, young people, and I have to say the majority uh, could care less about COVID. True. They're out every weekend. And, and like I said, on Friday night, um, when I was out and about, I, I mean, I, was out looking to see what was kind of going to go on and it was happening. And I saw big parties. I saw lots of people, lots of gridlock. And I saw very few masks. Well, Hattie, to interrupt you for one second, that's mm -hmm. kind of the feedback I got from one of my best friends whose children go to school in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. So they have to wear masks all day at school. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they get written up. My son got written up in Alpharetta for not wearing his mask in the hallway one day, idiot. Uh -huh. But um, she said the crazy thing was, so they enforce all this so tightly during the school day, but at a football game, she's like, they're like clustered on top of each other. And no mask. No mask, no nothing. And she's like, so what What are we doing? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I saw that too. Well, speaking of our topics, um, let's go to a short break. And when we come back, maybe we can uh, get more into it. All right. Well, you know, due to COVID, uh, we don't have a commercial tonight. And we're going to do a short show tonight as well. We're not going to do the full hour. We're going to do 30 minutes. Um, and that's because we are still transitioning and making sure how we're going to run the show, whether it's going to be a full hour show or a 30 minute show. Now, last week we did 30, we did an hour and didn't even know it was an hour. Next thing you know, we were off to the races. Yeah. This week we're going to do a 30 minute show. So let's just get ready for that. And let's get ready to jump right on into our first sports quickie. Anybody out there up for a quickie? A sports think quickie. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> All right. So let's go to Lindsay. Lindsay, what you got for us? Well, so um, this week I am talking about Clarissa T-Rex Shields, um, the two-time Olympic boxing champion. She beat Maria Eve Dakari on Friday night to remain undefeated and become the first undisputed champion, male or female, in two weight divisions in the four belt era. That alone is a huge victory for women's sports, but she took it a step further by blazing the trail for other women boxers. After Showtime postponed her fight last March because of the coronavirus pandemic and never rescheduled it, she took to pay-per-view, betting her fans would follow. This was the first woman headliner, or first woman headlined a pay-per-view event since Layla Ali fought in 2001, and when more than 100,000 fans paid to watch. It drove Shields crazy that she was forced to all but bet networks to or um it drove shields crazy that she um that she was forced to all but beg networks to broadcast her next fight after she the self-proclaimed quote the greatest woman of all time shields who said she would have been paid three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for her fight took it personally that a networks proceeded to broadcast men's fights, but not hers during the pandemic. 
She doesn't believe the networks show women's fights or pay women fighters enough. And belt organizers don't respect women fighters enough. Women fight two minutes, 10 rounds title bouts, while men fight three minute, 12 round contests. Shield thinks boxing authorities are degrading them because they don't think women can physically handle the extra time in the ring. So a little bit more about Clarissa. Um, she has been paving the way for women's boxing since the age of 17, when she was the first woman ever to win a gold medal in women's boxing in 20, 2012, Olympic Games in London. She grew up in Flint, Michigan, and um, has been a fighter all of her life. She grew up in poverty and was sexually abused. Her mother was an addict and her father served long prison sentences. She was 11 when she started boxing at a local gym with her ex-coach, Jason Crutchfield, who trained her for free. But despite the odds, Krista has gone on to be one of the best boxers of all time. However, even with the resume that makes her quote claim seem plausible, she hasn't received the same level of respect as a male boxer would if he had the same accomplishments. Krissa is planning on taking her talents and fighting skills to the MMA, not only because she dreams of being a two sport champion, but because it is overall better for women than boxing is currently. Holly Holm, another fighter who made the transition from boxing to MMA credits UFC pres president Dana White for making the sport much more hospitable to women than boxing is. And she believes boxing needs someone like him willing to put their neck out there for women and to give them the exposure they need. White quickly realized how many fans women can bring to the sport after he signed UFC's first women fighter, Ronda Rousey, back in 2012 who has since become one of the sport's biggest stars. As of right now, S.H.I.E.L.D. seems like she is planning on being the person to do just that. And Friday was a big step forward for her. And um, big step forward for her and towards equality. Regardless of how many people, uh, regardless of how many people brought, bought the fight on Friday, it is just the beginning for the champ who plans on taking it and building it from there. Another dream of hers, which I thought was really interesting, is to start an all women sports network to show women boxing so that fans know where to tune in to see a great women's fight and to think she is, I make uh, tune in to see a great women's fight. I personally think she's onto something. Women compete not only against themselves for world titles, championships, medals, trophies, but they also have been competing against the men who play their same sport for equal pay, fan attendance, and respect since the beginning. A network that focuses on women and gives not only equal, for, but for once more airtime to female athletes, so they have the chance to build their own fan base, brand, and which will turn into sponsorships and give women opportunity to make more money. Sounds like pretty amazing to me. Female boxers and female athletes in general aren't given the same airtime as male athletes. And if no one can see their fights, matches, or games on television, it's hard for these athletes to get attention and the publicity they deserve. As a former athlete, I can guarantee you that elite female athletes aren't asking for any handouts or special treatment. We all want to earn everything we are given, but when you reach the top of your sport and you're the best in the world, like Shields is, you deserve to have, you deserve and have earned the right to be respected and paid accordingly for your accomplishments. This is the same argument the US women's soccer team has been making for years now. They won four World Cup gold medals for the US while the men didn't even qualify for the last World Cup in 2018, but they still paid, but they're still paid more than women. This has gone way past not fair and it's exposed a huge problem for women's sports as a whole. The Shields 
Dakari fight could have, couldn't have come at a better time with International Women's Day coming up tomorrow. The day spent celebrating women's achievements and rallying, rallying for equality. This year's theme is choose to challenge because challenge comes from change, which I think is perfect because I can't think of anything an athlete loves more than a challenge. Clarissa has already started paving the way and challenging the norms of women's boxing, not just for herself, but for all young women that are coming after her. She said that she wants people to think about her someday and say, Clarissa Shields was so much bigger than boxing. She helped change the world. And I personally would advise anyone, male or female, to stand in her way. Great job, first of all. Great job reporting on, on her and, and right, because it's National Women's Day coming up. I think that was a phenomenal start to that. And yes, she's definitely a woman that's going to be paving the way for a long time. Um, I love her sportsmanship. I love her entertainment in the game. Um, I, I think that's what makes it a, a, a lot appealing to me as well. <clears throat> and And you're right. And it's so sad that you know, women have to always take a seat back sometimes but they're doing more than the men. It's just more, yeah. it's just expected for the men to make more. Mm -hmm. They if they have to support families as if women don't, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm glad that, that she went somewhere else and she got the respect she wanted. She got her fight off and she showed them she was a draw and and, and she could, you know, get a, a good audience and she did. And I thought that was excellent. And she's going to um you have seen now which um one of the arguments was um, that she was too good in the boxing world. So nobody was kind of like the fight draw, like the attention she would draw from fighting somebody because she's so good. Just um, wasn't there, like wasn't there because she's just there just assuming she's going to win. So uh, I think uh, going see, to I UFC. Don't. Mm -hmm. I don't because I've seen boxers go from boxing to UFC. It's a different ball game. Oh, yeah. No, I'm saying like the UFC is now like going to be a new challenge for her. So Very I think much so. Because like boxing, that's one um, one thing that like she's pretty, pretty, pretty great at. dominant like mm -hmm. at. So um, and I saw that there's a movie coming out. Um, about her, there's a documentary called T-Rex, if you want to watch it. It's about her first uh, Olympics when she went in 2012 in um, London. Okay. And um, it's it's pretty inspiring. And um, her story, there's um, a lot there. And uh, I think she's such a great person, um, role model for young women um, who want to be boxers. Because they are not as respected at all as the men. Well, and doesn't that sound a lot like when Tiger played in golf tournaments and everyone just expected we can go, but we know who's going to win? Oh, no. More like Mike Tyson. You well, better yeah, go I'm and you better get there early. Golfing. <laughs> oh, you want to just switch it into your golfing. More like Mike Tyson. <laughs> not only did they go, but you better you better be there in the first round. Because if you went to a Mike Tyson's fight late, you probably missed it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're right. It, it was just assumed that he was going to win most of the time. So same thing. Well, thank you so much for that, Lindsay. And thank um, you again. you're so welcome. Always engaging and informative. Um, <laughs> so detailed and smart. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and next up will be thanks, my guys. quickie. And and like someone said, that's the longest yeah, quickie they've ever had. So so <laughs> I know. Yeah, a little bit, a little, a little uh, less no. quickie on my end to this week. So <laughs> Look, some some like it long, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> I appeal to every. We all appeal to everyone. Oh, you know? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, so let me tell you about my sports quickie. <laughs> well, of course, I'm going to talk about the NBA All-Star Weekend that was supposed to happen, didn't happen, did happen. 
the whole nine. First of all, the NBA All-Star Weekend was scheduled to be in Indianapolis. And because of COVID and, and all kinds of other things going on, they decided they wanted to move it to Atlanta. Now, a lot of people was, was happy about that because Atlanta was more wide open. Atlanta had more business and more restaurants open. And of course, all the nightclubs and all that kind of stuff. So it was exciting. So as soon as they moved it to Atlanta, believe it or not, I believe the attendance went up. Because a lot of people come here, they know it's a party city. So that's exactly what happened. Even though our mayor got on the news and, and everything else and said, don't come. I met a young lady on Friday night and she specifically said to me, well, when your mayor said, don't come, that was when I got my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so NBA parties happened a lot. Lots of parties happened on Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday night tonight. Now, Let's talk about the NBA itself. Here's the problem I had is the people were here, but there wasn't enough for them to do. Um, there just wasn't enough NBA stuff. Mm -hmm. It was plenty of parties. Mm -hmm. I think that the NBA really should have, someone from the NBA should have went down to Super Bowl and saw how they still had the Super Bowl experience. Mm -hmm. They still had a lot of things going on, but they were they had people out there with signs. They had people like walking around tapping you. It's like, excuse me, cover your nose. The mask has to cover your nose and your mouth. I mean, they were very serious about masking, but they still held the events. And I haven't seen anywhere where Tampa had this really high uh, uh, COVID rate from Super Bowl weekend. But I think that for me, I just wish the NBA would have did a little bit more to prepare. Um, other than switching gears and switching cities, uh, I still think more NBA events could have happened during that weekend. Now, um, like I said, they should have followed Super Bowl. They should have followed the NFL's league on that um, because there just wasn't enough NBA events at all. Yes, parties. I mean, lots and lots and lots of parties, big parties, small parties, plenty of parties, but not events. And I've been to NBA All-Star Weekend before and NBA All-Star Weekend, it is a big party weekend. That is a big part of it. But I just wish that there was more for the kids, more for the families. And I know they wanted to be COVID safe. And, and it was hard to plan for something where not only, you know, there are certain people the mayor didn't want to hear, but there were players that didn't want to do it. Players who, who voiced their opinions and didn't even want to come out. They didn't want to come to Atlanta. They didn't want to have an all-star weekend. Well, here's my thought with that. You were playing every other night in somebody else's it's a home state. You, you're all over the place playing. So this was just another night to play. And um, the NFL did a good job on keeping the players safe as far as I, I could tell. They only brought them in uh, to their hotel rooms and they had to stay in quarantine. They were not allowed to go out and to go to any parties. They specifically came here for All-Star Weekend and to play in the All-Star Game. And that's the way that was. They were not out and about and all over the city of Atlanta. That didn't happen. The bad news is a few players right at the last minute, um, two really good players, Joel Embiid and also Ben uh, Simons, they were both uh, asked not to come because of contact tracing. Both of them uh, were contact traced back to a barber. They both went to the same barber, and this barber has been in contact with someone who has contacted COVID. So because of contact tracing, they know that they had been to the barber, someone else who has COVID and went to this barber, or so on and so forth. But they were supposed to be big players and big winners in tonight's game, and, and they didn't come. Uh, they were NBA has uh, set, set them out um, and put them in quarantine because of that. And um, now the NBA has uh, gotten a great measure to keep the players safe. And, and I, and I really respect that. And I think everyone else should understand that too. And in the hotels where they stay, I mean, they were serious about quarantining and all of that. Uh, they didn't, didn't come out to no parties for them. No, even everything has pretty much been virtual. Even the interviews with the media has been virtual. They wouldn't even let them have go into interviews with the media or anything. They're very serious about keeping these guys uh, safe. And that was excellent. It was not many fans were, were not allowed into the state farm arena either. So uh, 
it's it's pretty much virtual a whole virtual situation other than the players coming together they have said to everyone this is all it's all going to be virtual and that's exactly what it has been um the lineup for tonight, of course, the game time started at eight. Now, generally it would be a, like a three-day event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, between the parties, um, the slam dunk contest, which is always a big one, the skills challenge, which is always a big one. And then they would do different events for the youth. Um, another big event. And uh, not, not to mention all the legends that we would normally love to see come into town for different events and parties. None of that happened. So tonight's game, um, of course, the critics are, are, are putting uh, Team LeBron. They're saying Team LeBron mm -hmm. should win. Uh, the slam dunk contest, uh, they've got uh, a few young guys coming out. But all, all, all the critics and all the news people are saying they think a shorter guy. You know, you got these seven footers and they, can, they don't have to jump but so high to make a slam dunk. But the critics are saying that uh, a shorter guy, a six five, a six four guy, will probably win the slam dunk contest because they look more engaging and more athletic to be able to jump that high. I remember when Spud Webb was in there, and he ate five eight, five nine, five seven, something like that. Um, and uh, the skills test, uh, the three pointer, they all they Steph Curry, they said he's the man to beat. And so we'll be watching tonight and, and see how it all, you know, how it all finishes up. It is virtual. So we, we couldn't be there anyway, the way they have it set up. No media was allowed in there. No, not many, if any fans, I don't even know if any fans were able to go. As far as I've I found out, it's going to be completely virtual. So we'll get to see it all tonight on television with the rest of the world. And uh, that's my sports quickie. What's um, interesting I um, found is when you said a shorter guy um, is going to win the slam dunk contest, actually for the skills challenge, um, big guys have won um, most years, like leading up to this. And a big guy actually won tonight. Um, he's from, I think, I think he's from the Pacers. Um Sabornis, yeah. So for the he's skills born, challenge for the skills challenge. Right, so, right. um, he, like big guys have won that. So, um, yeah. most recently. Yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting when you have small guys winning the slam dunk that contest, the mm -hmm. big guys um, win the skills win the challenge. Skills challenge. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that we're calling guys that are six four small. Short. Yeah. yeah. What I didn't say short, I said small. No, <laughs> which oh, is even worse. Oh, worse, Hattie. They don't which is even worse people. compared to I seven mean, seven footers. Seven well, oh, no, you said seven footers. I was laughing so hard. Well, well like when I was in college, like I lived with all volleyball players and I was the shortest in the house, and I'm six foot. So it's an athlete thing. <laughs> it's an obviously. Athlete thing. <laughs> it's an athlete thing. All right. Our okay, next so question. Let's go ahead, Angelique. NASCAR. Bring it over to you. I don't know why my prop that came up last week. Oh, didn't you didn't hear the other car worry. That was so awesome. I'm like, <laughs> it was. is that a race car? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. So big news this week, as far as NASCAR goes. So Kyle Larson had gotten himself into a little bit of trouble using some racial slurs, which we won't even go into. We're going to leave that on him. Okay. However, he did just win in Vegas. Um, it's his first victory since 2019. And interestingly enough, guess what, ladies? Yes. Wait for it. Ba baby, baby. It's his first win with team owner Rick Hendrick. Okay. Which, as we discussed last week, I think from the news I've heard, sweet baby Jeff Gordon. I knew sweet baby was coming in. Yeah, I knew he was coming too. Sweet baby Jeff possibly be possibly will be taking over Rick Hendrick Sports. All right. And all to, look, it's all tied. It's all coming. All tied in there. All right. Like a circle. Yeah, like so this is the first win since 2019. And since he had his little incident with his mouth getting away with, you know, things he shouldn't have I said. I remember that. Yep. 
yeah, not the coolest thing ever, dude. Think it through, think it through. Um, he I, just wasn't thinking at all. His mouth was just. No, mad. I think he wasn't. Maybe he was drunk. Who knows? Like a lot of things happen when people are drunk. Blame right? it on the like, alcohol. <laughs> the alcohol. Yeah. Because then you're like, yeah. And then you just are like, oh, I don't remember saying that. I must have been drunk. I, been drunk. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've never had to say that. However, in that same race, um, Brad Keselowski placed second. So um, he was with the team Penske Ford. Um, and then, guess what? Third. Sweet, third. Sweet baby. Kyle Bush. Uh oh. Kyle Bush was third. And then Hamlin fourth, Ryan Blaney closing up the top five. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We're getting closer to having the racers here in Atlanta. That's woo, right. Woo. End of the month. The end of the month, they'll be here. That's down right. We're going to be in there, like, pressing them for info on everything. And if I happen to see sweet baby Jeff Gordon, sweet it's going to be all you, Hattie, to pull me off. Uh, I'll, <laughs> you I'll, just blame it on the alcohol, right? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Like, oh, I was struck, I don't remember. Yeah. Exactly. That's one of the best videos <laughs> created. Thank God they didn't have any of this when I was in, like, college. <laughs> thank you. It was a good video. I, I enjoy that one quite quite a lot. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your sports quickie and all of the information. And for our fans out there, please make sure you follow us on Instagram, ladies underscore in underscore the underscore locker room. And also on Facebook and on YouTube, ladies in the locker room. We will be coming to you every week, bringing you more sports news and information. Our goal, of course, is to help women understand more about sports so they can kind of sit down and have conversations with with your sons, with your husbands, with your guy friends or your gal pals. <clears throat> so we'll be bringing you all the information and keeping you up on or what's going on in the world of sports from our point of view. Thanks so much for watching. Ladies in the locker room, we'll see you next Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you there. <laughs>